Okay, because I took a bunch of photos and I don't really have time to put them all together into a, one of those fancy builds. Uh, this is an Ace Upper Decker, uh, which I've modified, um, I think, in a, in a way that makes it more useful. So, the first thing that I'm going to show you is that from the outside, although I didn't do a perfect job with sealing all the, I mean, from a looks perspective, it... It, um, it looks pretty much like a regular Ace Upper Decker. Um, you'll notice that it's been uh, bedlined already. Uh, I bought it used from a forum member, and he did a great job of bedlining it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, open it up, show you the hinges, um, and show you kind of what it looks like, and, and what it looked like originally, and sort of the problems that I saw. Right here. Can you hold that for a second? Okay. I'll take this back. Thanks. Where's that hinge? So, first thing you can see back there are the three large hinges. I'm going to show this. This, I'll put my thumb there. That is the original hinge. Um, they used, uh, I think, M3 or M4, just little teeny tiny button screws. What I did was I replaced them with nothing fancy. But if you go back and you look at that, you'll notice that there's a bolt going through it. Um, that way I can take the hinges off pretty easily. Um, these are also obviously stronger. The point wasn't to make the hinges stronger, it was actually to spread the torque forces around on that back panel. So now I've got four bolts multiplied by three hinges over about 12 times the service area. Um, and so to the extent that there's any side torque on that panel, it spreads it around. The other thing that I didn't like was, it's hard to see this, but if you look down the line of this original upper decker, the entire weight was always resting just inside this rib. So if you look at their website, they tell you that it holds 1,200 pounds, and, and I have no doubt that it holds 1,200 pounds. They did a great job of engineering the, the, the structure. The problem is, is that it isn't spread out over anything, so it's highly concentrated. So what I did was, you can see here, this is a quarter inch aluminum plate. It's been, I spray painted it with, you know, rattle can, Rust-Oleum bed liner. Um, but that's just quarter inch aluminum plate. There's 3 8 inch uh, uh, stainless bolts coming through the top. And all I did, it's 4 inches wide, I bought a 4 foot long section. And you'll notice how that it kind of comes along. I didn't do the whole thing because I didn't know how far over here. I didn't want to have any interference, so I ended it a little bit early. But now, the entire weight of the upper decker plus whatever you've got sitting on there rests and when it's sitting down it's just outside this rib. So uh, that was the first thing. The second thing was if you think about the deck when it's got weight on it it can if there's if you go around a corner for example the deck slides that way so in addition to fixing the hinges right these touch the inside bed rail and the idea is there's one on each side so the, the deck can't slide uh, from sideways forces. The last thing that I did was I replaced the uh, struts. They were originally 75-pound um, struts. I replaced them with 100-pound struts. Same company, same size, same exact everything. You buy them on Amazon. They're about 15 bucks a piece. I think that's the name of the company there. But anyway, the point was is that it uses the same dinky little L bracket. I, I can't, I don't have one here with me, but... Uh, as soon as I put it up there, um, uh, it bent uh, almost immediately. So, uh, out of some leftover, this is a quarter inch, uh, one and a half inch by one and a half inch um, L channel, or angle bracket, or whatever. I'm not a metallurgist, but anyway. So I had some leftover, so I just made other uh, set of other brackets. Um, I'm going to show you on the inside. That's how I fashioned. Um, that's how I fashioned uh, sort of the corresponding bracket to hold it in down below. 
Now, the one thing that I will say is, is that in Ace Upper Decker's original instructions, uh, they tell you to use the factory mounting hole for the bed rail system for one of the holes on that little uh, bracket that you get with the, uh, uh, with the uh, struts. And on the other hole, they tell you to just put a through bolt. And it involves taking off the headlight, and then you really need a half-inch uh, shorty. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a pain because you're trying to hold a nut uh, on the other side. So when I was redoing this, um, I drilled out the hole and used a 3 8 inch um, stainless steel uh, nut cert. That uh, solved all my problems. The last thing was uh, how to fix, how to do the latches. This probably required the most customization and I admit that it's not as clean as the original solution. The original solution from Ace Upper Decker hangs here so everything is out of the way and there's just a very very small, I don't know how to describe it, but there's a, it's like a, it's like a little um, uh, sheet metal shaped hook um, and the, the latch comes down from the top, grabs that and, and holds the deck down. And it's great and actually you can see Right up there, see those two little pinholes? That those were the two pinholes for the original uh, latch system. Obviously, you can tell not not a whole lot of strength. Um, these I got from got them on Amazon. They're about six bucks a piece. Um, I just for the whole world to see. Yes, remember measure first, then measure again, then drill holes in your brand new Jeep. Yeah. So anyway, I screwed that up. But all these are they're nut certs. Um, Let's see, that hole, and you can't see uh, the one next to it, because I drilled that out, but that hole and that hole were the original um, holes for the original hinge. I thought I could reuse one by drilling one out and drilling this in, and anyway, the problem was is that once I got it up, up here, I ran out of adjustment room. So I had to um, essentially move everything down one, and of course when I was measuring down, I screwed up one of the holes, and so you'll notice back here, there's a nut cert that didn't quite line up. So what I learned on these was uh, drill one hole, uh, put your nut cert in, get it set, um, and then drill, uh, tighten it down, and then drill through to make your other holes. So on each side as it happens, I screwed this up twice in a row, so on each side I've only got uh, three bolts, but those are plenty. Those are quarter inch by one inch long. I used stainless nut certs. A little bit about hardware. Um, every time I drilled through the um, either the upper decker or my bed, uh, first of all, I uh, when it was fresh, uh, I painted it with matte black primer, just Rust-Oleum, um, heavy duty. Uh, then I, when I was using nut certs, there was a black silicon epoxy. I forget what it was, what it's called. But anyway, I coated liberally the uh, the nut cert with that, um, and then on all of the you can see this one is still fresh, it's still curing. After about a couple of days, it turns clear like that. Um, uh, and then you can also see a little bit, I'll just show you in the back here. You can see where it, where it takes a while to sort of fully cure. I admit that it's not pretty, but whatever, I don't care. In, in some places you can see, for example, on that dull hinge, or on, on, the, on the middle hinge where the, where the uh, bed liner is dull, that's from the matte black uh, primer spray paint. Um, the primer doesn't, or the, sorry, the silicon uh, doesn't look great. These little spots here, those are from uh, metal shavings that must have uh, <laughs> ended up on top of the deck. Um, and then, of course, they rust out. Uh, but the bolts themselves are stainless. Uh, like I said, I primed the, the bare metal on the inside, and then I filled them with um, outdoor silicon moldy, the stuff that you use on, on, on windows, for example. Uh, it's white, but it's supposed to dry clear. Just trying to keep as much water as I can out of there. The last thing that I did was, um, it's just the gaskets. So you can see here, this is quarter inch, quarter inch foam on the under pad, sits right in that channel here, makes for a nice soft landing. Um, and I just used a variety of, uh, uh, that's uh, D section um, tubing. And then this is one of those tailgate seals. This one actually, I'm not, I'm not really happy with. Uh, it just, it doesn't look great. Um, it was hard to stick in. And actually I had to put a piece of D tubing on the inside and then a separate tailgate gasket on the outside. So, but it is waterproof. Um, I noticed that this piece is sticking up here. That's supposed to, that's, that's just not going to work. I'm going to have to figure something out, but, um, the point is, is that it is waterproof. Um, and, uh, 
All right, Mason, can you just hold the phone for a second? Thanks. All right, I'm just going to close this. I know that was a bit of a bang, but usually it doesn't make that much noise. Take this back. All right. Let's so open the top. The only real thing that I did was, uh, and I forget the name of the company that I got this from, but put a piece of air track, aircraft track in. I did, I did buy the little, the little ends here. These screws that hold them in are a total pain in the ass. They are quarter inch screws, but if you go to your hardware store and buy Phillips, and they, they come with wood screws, and you can buy. Uh, one and a half inch long um, stainless bolts with nuts, but the, the nuts aren't nylock nuts. And anyway, so I just, I tried to buy them from my local hardware store, but a standard quarter inch bolt, um, and I forget what the head is called, but you know, the bevel, the beveled head like that with a Phillips head, the, the head ends up being too big. So if you size down the bolt, you can get the right size head, but then of course you don't have the thickness of the bolt so anyway, that was a pain. So I ended up using the bolts that they supplied. I bought nylock nuts, and then I just uh, uh, used an angle grinder to cut off all the bolts on the inside. Um, I'm not gonna paint any of those bolts. This is the that uh, stainless steel eye hook. That's the only thing that is metric. There's sort of a mix of metric and non-metric, but anyway, that's what it is. Here, get off there. So the last thing I did was I just put this one on fresh. That one's already on there. What I wanted to point out about this, about this, uh, uh, so these are a little bit spendy. These are the sort of the Yakima version, but they, they use the SKS cores, which I really like, the, sort of the lock cores. But uh, what I really like about it is, and it's, and it's hard to see, um, but from here, if I had my top on, you can see... I, just trust me, it works. I can open the deck with that bike on there, um, and uh, and it does not interfere with the top. So the last thing that I'm going to do, I did get the sort of the, the original load bars uh, that upper the Ace uh, made um, for holding a rooftop tent. I'm, I'm not going to. I don't. You know, I don't believe in rooftop tents. And if you hate me for that, okay, that's all right. I I sleep on the ground like like regular Boy Scouts. Um, but. Uh, uh, I am looking at getting, and there's a company called Apex that makes them. You've, sometimes you see these aluminum uh, ladder racks. So I'll be able to put an aluminum ladder rack on, on uh, just on the uh, lip of this. I might, have to, I might have to drill something through there. So rather than using their clamp system, I'll just drill through the top of their uh, base mount here. But um, there's some that are adjustable in height. There's some that are pretty fixed. Uh, but I need to carry canoes and... Uh, this way I can um, I can uh, carry a canoe on the rack um, it, because it's a little bit higher up I'm pretty sure that I'll be able to uh, raise and lower the the upper decker but anyway the last thing that, that I that I bought was a four by six elastic net so the the what's been helpful is when I run out of um, if I run out of room on the inside uh, I've got waterproof bags and go up here I can secure them with a net also some of the um, job site uh, bins for example husky uh, makes a rolling bin. The, the reason that I have this down the middle, the, the original idea was I can fit two of those husky bins up here, um, the, the, the huge ones, the you know 160 quart ones or whatever they are. I, f I forget what the size is. But, um, oh sorry, it's called 37 inch rolling bin. Um, and the point is is that that thing is deep, it takes a ton of stuff, uh, and it's got a rubber gasket so when you're driving down the road um, nothing gets in. You just use uh, 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 what's called ratchet straps to hold it on. Yes, I admit that it's not the most secure, but at least during hunting season, if you want to get into the shotgun that's in my uh, bed, um, you have to get all through metal, and I'm pretty sure that if you end up stealing my shotgun and you had to do it by getting through the metal truck bed, that I'm not going to be at, at fault for for being, you know, wantonly lazy. Um, and yeah, so I think that this is, uh, uh, for me, Anyway, uh, this gets me uh, the best compromise. I get the bed, uh, and I get to use it uh, just the way that I want, whenever I want. I have unlimited storage space up front, you know, within weight capacity. Here, hold, hold this again. Sorry this video is taking so long. Just one more thing. Uh, I was going to, I think I mentioned this before, but... 
in order to take this off, um, I replaced the pins in those hinges with a 5 16 four and a half inch long, uh, just threaded bolt uh, and two jam nuts. So you can take those three bolts out. You don't have to screw with the hinges or anything like that. And then unscrew or unbolt uh, the, um, the strut from either side and that thing lifts right off. Now the one thing that I will say is, is that with the bed liner, I, I estimate that uh, it's probably pretty close to about 200 pounds now. Uh, the upper deck with the bed liner on it. So uh, I, I did install one of those El Cheapo uh, electric hoists. Again, bought it on Amazon. I think it was 200 bucks for the 800 pound version. I splurged for the uh, uh, wireless control and um, it worked great. Uh, it was that, it was very helpful. I used, basically I hooked the, um, I hooked the, uh, what's it called? The hoist uh, to uh, one of those rings one of those rings there and when I was um, adjusting and, and uh, 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 setting the uh, pneumatic struts uh, it was very useful to use that hoist um, just to make fine adjustments uh, up and down if you know what a snatch block is use that it makes the hoist uh, uh, work much more smoothly than doing a direct line pull um, the other thing is this little step ladder uh, I'm getting old I use that to get in, in and out uh, but every time I had the the hoist supporting this without struts and I was working in there, especially when it was kind of a little bit newer. Um, I just had that stepladder up and that, that uh, act as a safety for me. So anyway, um, that's it. Um, got the idea for the upper decker on the forum. Um, uh, bought the upper decker from a fellow forum member who helped me install it for the first time. Pat to Alaska, you're awesome. Thank you very much. You were really kind to my son. Um, and uh, uh, I loved it, but uh, realized that uh, that for me to feel safe using it and for what I wanted to do, it needed a few improvements. And so I did all the improvements that, um, that I think that, uh, ACE should have done. Now, by the way, one, okay. Last thing I know that on the original ACE hinges, one of the benefits of their, sorry, not hinges. One of the benefits of their, um, latch system was everything hangs up here. And so you don't interfere with the side bed. And I know that I'm going to catch something here or one of these days I'm going to have that up like that and I'm accidentally going to close it and I'm going to regret that. I, I am 100% aware of all of that. But this uh, this clamp uh, really, um, you can you can hold it, you can hold the, de the uh, decker, upper decker down uh, with a good amount of clamping force, um, but not, not so much that it uh, uh, is uh, wearing out this or doing anything like that. Um, and I just could not find the right kind of clamp. And if you if you have an upper decker, um, you'll know exactly what I mean. I, you cannot find a hanging 90 degree upper clamp like that. So this was the next best thing. And yes, I know that there are 90 degree uh, clamps out there, but not. You, you'll see. You just just work your way through it. Sorry. Right, last thing. All right. This was. Um, let's see. This was. These are three eighths inch. Uh, that was quarter inch aluminum um these are five sixteenths uh sorry the the uh, the bolts that i used in the uh struts are five sixteenths um and then the hinges back there those are all held on with um uh quarter inch bolts um, I, I just use uh three quarter inch sorry quarter inch stainless by three quarter inch um i use nut certs uh uh for most of it or uh, nylock nuts. Um, I used probably about a quarter tube of of heavy duty silicon and one one of those tubes of black um, black silicon adhesive and that was it. Okay, thanks. Bye.